Velocity in leadership is a term I have used and shared on stage around the world. In this digital age of ours, it's all about giving direction and purpose. Which are the tribes you as a leader have to focus on and what are the traits needed to become one? This is 5 Minute Friday, so join me as I give you my selection of top CEOs of the world. What's up everybody, Arndt Eriksson here with yet another 5 Minute Friday. Here's what I need you to do. Number one, subscribe. Number two, give it a thumbs up or smash it if you so desire. Number three, leave a comment down below or connect with me on Twitter or Instagram. It's at Arndt Eriksson everywhere. Okay, let's just jump into it. A great leader needs to be an inspiration to his customers, partners and employees. This means to be a conductor of the three tribes and make them play well together. The first tribe is your customers. This tribe consists of people who talk to their friends about your brand and they become your ambassadors. You need to make sure you attract, attain and activate your customers to amplify your message. Your second tribe is the company partners. Inspire them to be part of the ideation, development and implementation of products and services. We are very much in the collaborative economy. Your tribe is there, so use it. The third tribe is your employees. Everyone within a company is creative. It's about moving those ideas through tangible innovation and convert them to actionable marketing. These key tribes is what defines your orchestra, making them work together and boost your brand voice and create harmony. Build your brand tribe, make them play in tune and create impact. Inform, enlighten and inspire them to become an amplifier for your company and brand. That is the power of a great CEO that effectively implements velocity leadership. Let me explain. Company leaders are facing a crisis. Nearly one third of employees don't trust management. In addition to this, employers now have to cater to the need of the millennial generation. On average, after graduating from college, a millennial would change jobs four times before they are 32. Most of them also don't feel empowered on their current job. Now, it's clear that many leaders are failing to foster the sense of trust and loyalty in their tribes. Fortunately, that doesn't have to be the case. Future leaders have to focus on speed, move fast and be aware of what's happening around them. However, direction is also an important factor, not to mention purpose. Speed without direction is just movement. Add direction for your tribe and you have velocity. Here are seven of the most essential qualities that makes a great leader. True enthusiasm for a business, its products and its mission cannot be faked. Employees can recognize insincere cheerleading from a mile away. However, when leaders are sincerely enthusiastic and passionate, that's contagious. Whether it's living proper credits for accomplishments, acknowledging mistakes or putting safety and quality first, great leaders exhibit integrity at all times. They do what's right even if that isn't the best thing for the current project or even the bottom line. Leaders must motivate, instruct and discipline the people they are in charge of. They can accomplish none of these things if they aren't very skilled in communication. Listening is an integral part of communication. The best leaders understand that true loyalty is reciprocal. Because of this, they express that loyalty in tangible ways that benefits the members of their team. True loyalty is ensuring that all members have the training and resources to do their jobs. It's standing up for them in crisis and conflict. A good leader isn't simply empowered to make decisions due to their position. They make decisions and take risks knowing that if things don't work out, they'll need to hold themselves accountable first and foremost. A good leader has faith in their ability to train and develop the employees under them. Because of this, they have the willingness to empower those they lead to act autonomously. When employees are empowered, they are more likely to make decisions that are in the best interest of the company and the customer as well. Simply put, people are more likely to follow the lead of those they like. The best leaders are well-spoken, approachable and friendly. They show sincere care for others. So, who are the top CEOs that I want to mention? First, I need to say that this list is based on a wide range of factors, including net worth, company value, personal and public perception and innovation. But the great thing is that if you disagree, then you can leave a comment down below. 
As a child, Jeff Bezos showed an early interest in how things work, reportedly dismantling his crib as a toddler in order to rebuild it as a bed and turning his parents' garage into a laboratory. He pursued his interest in computers at Princeton University, where he graduated in 1986 with a degree in computer science and electric engineering. Named after the South American River, Bezos launched Amazon.com on July 16, 1995, and it went public in 1997. The website easily outpaced its competitors, becoming the e-commerce leader after two years. His continued success led him to purchase the Washington Post newspaper in 2013 for $250 million. According to Forbes, Bezos was listed in January 2018 as the wealthiest person in the world, with an estimated net worth of $108 billion. In 2014, he was ranked the best performing CEO in the world by Harvard Business Review. In his early years, Jack Ma underwent a long period of misfortune. He applied for 30 different jobs, receiving rejections from them all, including a job with the police and even KFC, where 24 people went for the job, 23 people were accepted. On top of this, he applied for Harvard 10 times and got rejected each time. Ma started his first company in April 1995 after he, his wife and a friend raised $20,000. Called China Yellow Pages, the company was dedicated to creating websites for other companies and within three years it had made $800,000. Alibaba, a business-to-business -business marketplace site based in China, was founded in 1999 in his apartment with a group of 18 friends. It quickly became one of the most valuable tech companies in the world after raising $25 billion, the largest initial public offering in US financial history. Indira Noyi was named president and CEO of PepsiCo in 2006, having joined the company in 1994. She has directed the company's global strategy for over a decade, taking the lead on major acquisitions such as the deal with Tropicana in 1998. Noyi holds a master's public and private management degree from Yale School of Management and currently oversees more than 26,000 employees globally and over 100 brands and trademarks. Since starting as CFO in the company in 2001, the company's annual net profit has risen from $2.7 billion to $6.5 billion. In 2006, she became the fifth CEO in PepsiCo's 44-year history and was named the third most powerful woman in business by Fortune in 2014, moving up to second a year later. It's hard to remember a time before Google. It almost feels like it's always naturally existed, synonymous with the internet itself. It was the collaboration of PhD students Larry Page and Sergey Brin that brought it to a global computer in 1998, quickly becoming the most visited website in the world with a mission statement to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Google became Alphabet Inc. in 2015 after reorganizing its assets into a conglomerate, with Google remaining its head subsidiary. Sundar Pinchai became CEO of Google upon its completion, replacing Larry Page, who became CEO of Alphabet. Page was named number one in Forbes America's most popular chief executives, as voted by Google employees. And Fortune magazine named Page its business person of the year in 2014, declaring him the world's most daring CEO. Ahrens is the senior vice president of retail at Apple Inc. Prior to Apple, she joined Burberry in 2006 and took up the position of CEO. She mitigated the brand's decline in prestige by immediately limiting the number of clothing and accessories carrying the Burberry check pattern to 10%, minimizing the damage ubiquitous counterfeits had caused to sales. Aaron says that she did not model her approach after any other fashion house, but looked to world-class design as an influence, including Apple. The company value rose during her tenure from $2 billion to over $7 billion. Aaron's left Burberry to join Apple in 2014. She was also ranked 25th in Forbes 2015 list of the most powerful women in the world, 9th most powerful woman in the UK, and 29th in Fortune's 2014 list of the world's most powerful women in business. She was also a member of the UK Prime Minister's Business Advisory Council until it was disbanded in 2016. Well, that's the end of this 5 Minute Friday session. Now, this is my attempt to ignite a conversation, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree? Disagree? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyways, thank you for giving me your time and attention. I do hope I managed to inform, enlighten and entertain you. If you like this video, please consider giving it a good thumbs up. 
and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. It actually makes a difference. Be safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you in my next video. Shoo.